Solen är er en uendelig fornybar resurs. Teknologin som kräves för att utnyttja denna energin är er helt avgörande för att vi klarer att lösa dagens klimatutmaning. Solcellindustrin är er i stadig växt med både ökt efterfrågan men också med ökt konkurrens. För att fortælle mer om den utvecklingen och hur Norge kan vara en del av den, ber jag dere ta gott emot koncernchef i RSC, Ole Enger. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Pleasure being here. And um, I assume that everybody heard Arnold Schwarzenegger this afternoon speaking about his achievements in uh, in California related to solar energy. And uh, I'm now going to elaborate not only on the Californian situation, but the worldwide situation related to where solar energy is today. With the increase in population and economic growth, the world will need much more energy going forward. Up until now, the energy is by and large secured by fossil fuels. CO2 emissions, as we also heard this morning, continue to grow, and the world's focus on climate change is much lower than just a few years ago. This applies not only to politicians, but to the public in general. And we in the solar energy, uh, energy industry, we feel this in particular for the United States. According to uh, IEA, the world is on a trend towards global warming of six degrees Celsius, if no further actions are made. In my presentation, I will provide you with facts and data related to how the solar energy can contribute to resolve this situation. Let's then start to take a look at the, um, at the carbon footprint, the greenhouse gas emissions for the different sources of energy. On the upper tree lines here, we see the different renewables here contrasted to some of the better fossil fuels, the combined cycle gas turbine, with or without carbon storage and capture. And as you can see here, the differences are enormous. If we compare with more traditional or, or um, the most used car, uh, fossil fuels, the difference is two, th three times bigger. So, there are huge differences. When we go over to describe solar energy for you, it's very important to understand that solar energy is quite different to other energy sources. And the most striking thing is that solar energy is mostly produced at the point of use, point of consumption. This is totally different to other energy sources, where you normally produce the energy in very large units far away from the, where the energy is consumed. And of course, when you are comparing prices, you both have to take distribution as well as the cost of production into account. And very often, the distribution cost is as high as the cost of production. And in this context, solar energy has a great advantage, more so since also the grid is very often a limiting factor, a bottleneck for the increased consumption of energy. In addition to this, solar has the advantage that the production profile is very much matching the consumption pattern. So when production is high during the day, consumption is also very high, especially in warmer countries where air conditioning is consuming a, lot, a great deal of the total energy. But there's been one problem related to solar energy, and that is a cost. Up until recently, up until, I mean, if we go back three, four, five years, and 
you were asking, can really, I mean, everybody knew about the potential in solar. I mean, it's unlimited in, in, in amount. But will it ever be cheap enough to compete with alternative energies? Many were doubting. Fortunately, it's been like a revolution over the last years. And this is illustrated on this uh, graph where you see how solar energy now is approaching what we are calling, calling grid, grid parity, meaning that solar energy is becoming competitive with alternative energy sources on the grid. And here we see also that the more sun hours, the more competitive, for obvious reasons, the solar is. If we go more into detail about the cost structure, we see here how solar system prices or costs have developed in Germany from 2008 to 2011. It's gone from 4.8 euro per watt for res residential systems to the present price, which is about 2 euro per watt. So you, you can see it's a tremendous reduction in cost of production. Let's take an even more practical example here. Here we have compared solar energy, cost of solar energy, in Germany, Italy, and California with the price of electricity on the grid, the, the retail price. And for Germany, we have used a, a system price of 2.2 euro per watt. That's what it costs to invest in a solar system. In Italy, it's about three. In California, a bit higher. Why are there differences? Since the panel prices that REC are producing, they are the same all over the world. The differences in, in, this, in the investment price in these different countries has to do with the fact that Germany is a much bigger market, you have higher scale, and not least also a much more efficient system. And especially the permitting process is much more efficient and less costly than what is the case in Italy or in California. But as we see here, both in Germany, in Italy, and also parts of California, solar is becoming competitive with the prevailing retail price. And this is something we only could dream about a few years back. It's also very noticeable to see the effect of solar when it gets to a certain size in a different in, in, in a market. And here we use Germany. Germany is by far the largest market for solar in the world. And we see here how solar, introduction of solar, has influenced the variation of the price during the day. In 2006, which is indicated by the black top line here, solar was only a small part of the total energy source in, in, in Germany. In 2011, which is indicated by the, by the yellow line, we see how much solar has influenced the day price and got much, much less variation over the 24 hours, which, of course, is a great advantage for the consumers. And in this way, much of the subsidies that are paid also by the consumers for green energy is paid back in terms of much lower day prices for, gen for electricity in general. In this way, you will understand that solar energy can replace and, and, and supplement the most expensive uh, alternative sources of energy in a very cost-efficient way. Here, we have compared solar with diesel generators. And diesel generators are used very much in developing countries, where it often is the only source of energy. And it's, it's used in developed countries to cover the peak, the peak consumption during the middle of the day. So in this context, solar can play a 
role also in cutting costs, not only cutting emissions. Let me then move to the uh, to give you a, a, a status on the solar in industry in general. Solar has been growing very fast over the recent years. In fact, the uh, average growth of the industry has been between 60 and 70 percent up until this year. Probably the fastest growing industry in the world. When it comes to uh, the distribution between countries, you here see how dominant Germany and the rest of Europe is in this context, with 40 percent in Germany during 2010, and Italy as number two, and you also see the rest of Europe being quite important. Schwarzenegger earlier this afternoon was speaking about the United States of America, and I agree with him that California is in the forefront as far as the US is concerned, but if you compare here with, Euro with Europe, of course, US is, is far behind the development in this part of the world. How is this likely to change going forward? Well, certainly we hope that the US, I mean, taking the size of that market in, into consideration, will grow in the years to come. But I am probably more optimistic about what's going to happen in, in Asia. China, we expect, will start really applying solar energy from now on. And the same for India and, and, and also some other countries in that region. I mean, there is a misunderstanding, in my opinion, about, about China. China is very much concerned about renewable energy. And they are the biggest consumer of wind energy already. They have been somewhat cautious up until now with solar. They, in my opinion, have been waiting waiting for the cost to come down to a certain level, and then they start embarking on solar programs. And that's what we expect to happen right now. This is as far as the consumption of solar energy is concerned. When it comes to where the equipment is produced for the solar energy, the geographic pattern is different, as we can see here. This is where the panels, the wafers and the cells and the silicon is pr produced. And as we see here, China is dominating with almost 60% together with, with Taiwan in 2010 and are, are exceeding 60% in 2011. It's become the dominant source of equipment for solar energy. It's very clear that uh, China has taken the decision, this is such an in interesting industry, here we want to be in a leading position. <clears throat> in today's market, in 2011, prices, as I mentioned, have come down for solar energy and demand is unfortunately also slowing. We expect the growth of solar consumption from 2011 to 2012 to be only 10% compared to the 65% annual growth historically. And this has to do very much with the financial crisis in Europe. Simply, there is no funding available for solar systems in Europe. I mean, to invest in solar energy has never been more economic than it is today. Very profitable, very high returns, but there is lack of, of, of funding. The banks are much, much more passive, and you know, when you are investing in solar, you are investing 25 years ahead, and all the costs is up front. There is no maintenance costs. Everything is up front. That makes it difficult to finance in the present financial situation. Let me then say a few words about REC as a company. 
we are engaged in the entire value chain of solar energy from silicon produce, producing very pure silicon to through wafer cells modules and also involved in, in, in uh, installing the systems on the roof, rooftops either in residential houses or in, in commercial buildings or as a third segment in solar parks. We have invested quite heavily over the recent years. Some will say too much. We have invested 25 billion, and 20 of these billions are invested outside of Norway, mainly in the US and in Asia, Singapore. Here's a picture of our operation in one of our plants in, in the US. Here is our newest plant in, in, in Singapore, which is, a, is, which is a benchmark in the industry when it comes to producing uh, wafer cell and modules. Okay, let me then sum up my presentation. The present status, the short-term outlook for solar is uh, characterized by, by very much overcapacity, high price pressure, prices are, or solar equipment is today sold under the cash cost, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the industry as such is in a very difficult situation due to the lack of bank funding and the slowing down of the demand. Supplies are continue, continuing to increase, and there is a mismatch today between supply and demand. Long term, however, I think the outlook for solar energy is better than it ever has been. The competitiveness of solar definitely has now been demonstrated, and this will continue to improve forcefully with new technology introduced every year. We know already, because what we are going to do in 2012 and 13 is already determined but what, by what we have in the research pipeline from the recent years. We know we will be able to improve efficiency quite considerably also in the next years, and we are able to cut costs further. So there is no doubt in my mind that solar has the potential to become a significant part of the future energy mix. If policymakers, and we learned this morning, this is not only about policymakers, it's about the public in general. If we really want to combat climate change, we have got all the means in our hands. I have now outlined for you how, is, how it is within the solar industry. We have similar patterns within other renewables like wind energy, and we also heard here this morning, morning what the automotive industry has done over the recent years. So I think it's all up to us. It's no longer impossible to combat the climate change. Thank you. <laughs>